Lee Edwards, he's, uh, he's got a PhD. I'm going to ask you about that in a second, Lee. Uh, Distinguished Fellow in Conservative Thought at the Heritage Foundation. How are you doing, sir? Doing just fine. Thank you, Tim, for asking me to come on board. Hey, no problem. Let me ask you this before we even get into it. There's been a whole uh, heck of a lot of noise about not calling uh, Jill Biden doctor. You don't go by doctor, do you? Uh, no, although I'm very proud that I worked like crazy and I deserve the Ph.D. that I got. But oh, of course uh, you no, I don't think that's necessary. If I were still teaching, Tim, then I could be called doctor or professor as I have been when I've been teaching at the Catholic University. I uh, I actually dropped out of a doctoral program. Shame on me! Uh, in public policy, I did all but dissertation and like one class, and uh, the world caught up to me. And I was I was kind of tired. I, unlike you, I'm sure you got to actually have uh, colleagues that were conservatives in your program. I had none, and I was just tired of it at that point. Listening to academics, it was nice to have some support like that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, let me ask you this: What is going on with young people? What is happening that half of half of kids between and, and I'm old enough to call them kids now, eighteen to twenty nine, favor socialism over capitalism? Well, it's because they don't know what uh, what socialism is or what capitalism is. And I was thinking about this this morning, and let me give you an example about how capitalism works. The coronavirus vaccine. Does anybody think that our government would would have been able to produce the vaccine in less than one year? as Pfizer has done and Moderna has done and so forth? No, no way. And I think that's the kind of thing that we need to do is to provide examples of capitalism in action where it has produced and also the failures of socialism as well. Yeah, no, I mean, has there been a well, – this is an easy question. Has there been a <laughs> successful example of socialism in our history? Uh, not, not in world history, no. <laughs> Uh, Maybe the example I like to use, Tim, is of three nations, uh, the uh, Israel, uh, India, and the United Kingdom. All three nations tried and experimented with socialism following World War II. And it took a while, a couple of decades in, in almost all three cases. But at the end of that, all three realized that they were just spinning down and down <clears throat> into, into near recession, depression, poverty, and all the rest of it. And they switched to capitalism. Uh, and India, which had had half of its people were in poverty, half of its people became to have now the largest uh, middle class in the free world. And the UK, Great Britain, which was called the sick man of Europe, became one of the most prosperous uh, nations in the world under Margaret Thatcher, a conservative prime minister. Yeah, it's it's <clears throat> I, I don't I just. Again, this is this is mind blowing to me. I'm glad that you're someone who's tackling this uh, from an academic point of view, but it's just mind blowing to me that the young people refuse to see this. What what do you think happened? And I I blame it on participation trophies and everybody's a special snowflake. But what do you think happened to these young people between those ages of 18 and 29 to get them to favor socialism? Well, I think it's what they've been taught. I think it's what they've been read. Uh, there's a very well-known history of, of America out there by, by a professor, shouldn't call him Professor, Zim, uh, which gives the most possible negative picture and portrait of America. And that's just not the truth. Just, I mean, the, so typically the 1619 study, which was nonsense, saying that America was founded on racism. So again and again, our students are being given false information, misinformation, misleading information. And what we have to do is to come up with the right kind of textbooks, the right kind of teachers, and the right kind of studies and books. And I, They can be done. And frankly, Tim, I'm encouraged because I can see some young people whom I come into contact with uh, are willing to listen and to learn. And so I'm, I'm encouraged by that. Well, that's what uh, what's really got me and what, what caught my eye and why I can't figure out a lot of these how a lot of these cities are still voting Democrat and, and voting for these socialist policies is that I see, you know, a lot of entrepreneurial spirit coming from young people and a lot of like businesses coming up, whether it be a coffee shop or, um, you know, a lot, it's a lot of food stuff. It's a lot of, you know, like Etsy, like designs and things like that. And, and then they see how the government wants to regulate it and take their money away. And, and I can't believe that's not a wake up call for more young people, you know, when, when they realize, oh, wait, I'm better when I have a free market to play with. 
And when I have choice, when I can make my own decisions and not be dictated to by a bunch of bureaucrats in a far-off distant city. Uh, so I think that's true. Of course, the media, frankly, Tim, have a, have a role to play in all of this, both uh, negative for the most part, but could be positive, to talk about some of the success stories that you've just mentioned right here and now. And it's true. You can see them. And occasionally you'll see a reference to them. We need to do more of that, of emphasizing the positive and not always the negative. Yeah, it's it's remarkable to me. I want to go through your article a little bit here. And by the way, you guys can go to heritage.org, uh, and it's called The Case for Capitalism. It's a, a, a great piece. Um, you wrote it a little bit ago. But I want to go through some of the myths that I, I see this all the time online. I see on socialism the other day uh, this debate over uh, sex work is work. I won't get into that uh, with you. Uh, AOC put that out, and then I believe it was Dan Crenshaw or someone else, maybe a Matt Walsh, had said something about it. And everybody's like, well, everything is... You know, everyone prostitutes themselves in capitalism and everything is the worst. And I'm like, wait a second. You can't put everyone in this terrible category together. People work hard for a living. You're not selling yourself out. You're earning, a, a, you're, you're earning your way in a capitalist society. That's just how it works. But I want to go through some of these myths that you talk about here, and I'll have you talk about them. So uh, the first one, of course, is that capitalism is only for the rich, which is ridiculous. You got the floor. Well, you know, the percentage of the poor in America has fallen from 13% uh, some 30 years ago to just 3% now, 3% in 2018. And that's because if you begin working in uh, not only the, the immediate uh, cash flows from the government to, to the so-called poor or poverty, but all the other things they can get, food stamps and housing allowances and all the rest of it, that the, the poor, the so-called poor in our country, or not you know, 20 or 30 percent, but only 3 percent. That's because that uh, our capitalist system, although it's been somewhat weakened by the government rules and regulations, has been freed up recently under, under Mr. Trump, and we'll see what happens in the next four years. Yeah, uh, this, is, this goes into that AOC thing that I was, I was just mentioning a second ago, and this one is the one that I, I hear the most on, about young people, because honestly, I think they just hate working. I think they hate earning a living. Uh, at, at most, I, I'd imagine that everyone listening to this enjoys earning a living and working hard and seeing the, uh, the payoff for their hard work. But this myth is ridiculous. Capitalism is just modern exploitation. Uh, yes. I mean, it just, as you say, it just, just blows your mind. And when you see, for example, that when people have an opportunity to earn and to save and to set aside and make their own choices, what happens? that uh, unemployment just just drops away. Black and Asian unemployment in five metro areas like New York, Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, and D.C. saw black household income soar up 7% in D.C., 21% in Atlanta. And those people have been able not only to take care of themselves, but if they're the small businesses, which still form the core of our uh, situation, our economy in this country, what happens they expand their small businesses, they hire, they, and they bring into line more and more people with our capitalist system. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to me like, that, that people see otherwise. Uh, let me ask you this. What happens to an America if we shift to socialism? Can we shift to socialism? Well, I don't think we can. Fortunately, I think there are so many people who are profiting and benefiting from our free enterprise system that they would stand up and resist. Uh, after all, again, uh, I'm not uh, I'm not uh, promoting uh, necessarily Mr. Trump, but he did say that this is not going to be a socialist republic, and of course that's something that uh, was part of his campaign. And how many how many people voted? Uh, for him, I think, in, in measure because of his tax cuts and because of his deregulatory uh, policies, what, 70 million? Uh, mm -hmm. 73 that, that's a pretty, pretty large segment of our, of our population. And I think they'll get up on their hind legs and say, no, we're not going to allow that to happen. 